things. This is the final piece that I created in the collection. I got to this one, I realized I'm not finished, but it's, it's, it's an adequate place to stop. And basically, what it tries to celebrate is this is what I got out of the Holocaust. I went into it into understanding the Holocaust to try to work out my demons, but in the end, I was pleasantly surprised to find that for my own purposes, I found something else in the Holocaust that takes me out of it. And it's this idea about who we really are and how we how we've changed. And what this is supposed to represent is, you know, at, at all the events, weddings, and, and the holidays, we, we sanctify it with wine and over a, a, a cup of wine. So here, I'm trying to show that the stem is broken out. That if you look at the Holocaust, all sanctity should have been lost. If you, if you look at it, it's uh, it, it's tremendously hard to continue. But for the fact that the Jewish people were able to step up and take and take the, uh, the place of the stem and hold it so that not, not a drop of sanctity fell. So for me, it's really celebrating the, the Jewish people involved. And, and just, just the way that Rabbi's talking about it, there's always a balance. You can, you can argue with God, you've got to have the same amount of respect for him at the same time. And in this one, I first rendered this, because the other ones were also evolutions, I rendered it simply the cup and, 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 and us in the stem. But I realized it wasn't enough, it wasn't honest enough. For me, at the end, I have to come back to the idea that God's hands are in there, that I, I can't understand if I'm looking at the Holocaust, but I believe it in my, in my heart that God never really let go, and that he is, he, he, that this is a partnership. So the piece ended up being a piece of partnership, where, you, where the main focus, let's say, is on us and how we survive, but it's really something that we, we do now as a partnership with God, being involved with God. That's what this piece tries to do. Tries to do. And, Tim, I'm just going to, when I look at this piece, I want desperately to be this guy right here. I want desperately to be the man who's wearing the striped uniform of the Holocaust. I want desperately to be the man who goes through difficulty and still is bearing the cup. And still is bearing the cup of blessing. Still is bearing the cup of Judaism. Still making Kiddush Friday night. Still saying, I want the same thing in my life. Still saying, I want Yiddish I want God in my life. That's who I want to be. And we all, we all, for some reason, the stem has been broken in all of our lives. We've all experienced something that's been difficult and kind of the cup can overturn. And you know what? We have an excuse. We have a body. You know, people say, oh, why are you doing this? Or why are you running away from Judaism? Or why are you doing this? And you can tell them, because my parents know this. I went to Hebrew school and I was I was picked out of Hebrew school. Probably 30% of people who were picked out of Hebrew school. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone was picked out of Hebrew school. You know what I'm saying? My rabbi, my this, my minister, my pastor. I don't even know what it was. Like everyone's got some kind of story. And for some reason, all of our, all of our cup is literally teetering and tottering. <laughs> you know, I, I don't even know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably did have this in mind, but when I see this, I think I have this shrugged. Right? Do you, you have that in mind at all? Hey, it's like, it's like this, it's like, I'm going to hold the world. It's a lot, let me, let me tell you guys a crazy story. There was a Jewish king who lived many thousands of years ago in a time of rampant idol, idolatry and negative behaviors in Israel, and he Basically, found he found this this Torah scroll. The whole Israel had forgotten about Judaism, had forgotten about God. He was totally walking away, and this young king found a Torah scroll, and he read it. He had never read a Torah scroll. He was a king of Israel for 18 years. He had never read his heart. He started at six. He was for 12 years a king of Israel. He had never read a Torah scroll, and he read it. He opened up, and he said. To me, what is two of the most powerful words in Judaism? A lie lit hakim. It is upon me to hold it up. It's upon all of us to hold it up. We've got to be this guy. And yet, you know what? We all have a good reason. And they have a better reason. There's no question about it. Anybody who's walking around with a tattoo on his arm has a better reason to say, let the whole freaking cop just fall down. It's all a bunch of Garbage. I'm not interested. I don't want to do that. But we do in our lives. We've got our experiences. We've got our pains, our struggles. But a lie will not king. It's on me to hold it up. It's on me to be the person to be the hero. I want to thank Stan for his time, for his amazing, amazing, and powerful art. And I want to thank you all for coming out for this 
really intense but yet deep, deep evening. Thank you all so much for coming. Whoever wants to go back upstairs, we'll have cheese and wine. If you want to stay downstairs, there's questions and answers. Give me one second. And if you want to buy Stan Lebowick's book, there's gorgeous books, it's intense stuff, but it's right there. Thank you so much. And after these short announcements by Josh Gobert, we will have questions. Josh Gobert wants to, but you know what? There are a lot of people who did a lot tonight, but the person who did not yet get thanks is Lady Burnham himself. And you guys have no idea what she did. Really, truly, really, truly, we would not it so much. So, um, like hundreds of dollars worth of cheese yesterday, and I'll leave it at that. Anyway, um, I want you all to know that Torn on Tap is just getting heated up for this year, and I hope to see every single one of you in one of the next Torn on Taps. We've got one coming up in about, it, yeah, in September. You'll all get the Facebook um, e invite as well as email. And thank you so much for coming. Again, huge thanks to Tara Foreman, who provided the staff. And, and Jenny Gross, also, who brought the staff. Eileen Crane is right up there. And, uh, and the sound system. Noah Klein on the sound. Sounds smooth, it sounds beautiful. Oh, Noah Klein. It's so beautiful. Okay.